Hi, my name is Dr. Rudramon and through the Oral Health Channel, today we are going to be talking about why do some patients experience tingling sensation or numbness after wisdom tooth surgery. Let's start. So today I'm going to be talking about a very, very popular complaint that a lot of patients go through, especially who go through lower third molar surgery or wisdom tooth surgery of the lower jaw. What happens is that they undergo the procedure for whatever reasons that the tooth can be carious, it can be impacted or it's causing some sort of, uh, you know, problem in, uh, in chewing or something like that. And after the surgery, they still experience, even after the healing period has elapsed, they still feel some sort of paresthesia, anesthesia or dysesthesia. Before I talk about what uh, happens in these things, let me just define what these terms are. Anesthesia is an absolute loss of sensation with just a little bit of perception of touch. Secondly, then you have dysesthesia, which is uh, any sort of altered sensation that you get in a nerve. And paresthesia is a perverted sense of uh, sensation where you feel that there is some sort of numbness or tingling and that is bothersome to the patient. In simple words, paresthesia can also mean like that you have something crawling over your bone or in your nerve, that kind of a feeling. That is exactly what paresthesia is described by patients. Now what happens is before we start into what is the paresthesia and what is being caused by it, let me explain you the concept of two nerves that play an instrumental role when it comes to this problem. One is the inferior alveolar nerve and the other one is the lingual nerve. The inferior alveolar nerves run here on both sides into the lower jaw and supplies the teeth and we usually anesthetize that nerve so that we can take out the tooth. Secondly, we give another block that is known as the lingual nerve block. That is to make sure that all sensations that are there on the inside of the bone and at the same time around the tongue, those areas are anesthetized so that the patient is pain free while the operation is happening. Now, basically the paresthesia or the uh, dysesthesia or the anesthesia that happens post operatively even after the surgery has been over for a long time happens due to either inferior alveolar nerve injury or lingual, al lingual nerve injury. So, now let me come to the causes. First of all, there is no particular case that you can actually tell that yeah, you will have problems here, but there are some scenarios where you have to be a little careful, especially around teeth which are impacted and which are deeply impacted into the bone. That means you will require extensive flap raising and you will require extensive bone guttering with the help of burrs and sectioning of the tooth. At the same time, operator experience also does bring into some sort of uh, you know, contribution in the picture and post-operative healing and edema, if any, is also, uh, this also plays a role in the injury. Now, the injury can be either direct or indirect. Let me start with the direct injury. That's very simple. From the start, if it's there, you can have direct injury with just the fact that when you're inserting or injecting local anesthesia, you can pierce the nerve sheath of the inferior alveolar nerve or the lingual nerve and that can cause discomfort post-operatively to the patient. Otherwise, once you've opened the flap, that means you've, you've taken an incision and opened the gums so that you can visualize the tooth. And if the tooth is very deeply seated in the bone, that means you will require to section the bone with the help of burrs. That will also make the tooth susceptible if it's very close to the nerve. Now, one of the things that you can actually locate as a clinician is that if the nerve is very close to the roots of the third molar on a 2D X-ray, be it an IOPA or an OPG, you might as well want to get a CBCT evaluation done so that you can get a 3D visualization of that area and how you can spare the lingual nerve and the inferior alveolar nerve in case of avoiding the injury. Secondly, a lot of times what happens is that most of the clinicians nowadays don't talk about and they don't want to propagate about the fact that you don't raise a lingual sided flap. The lingual sided means this is the buccal side and the on the inside of this side near the tongue that is the lingual side. So we seldom avoid lingual flap reflection. That means we avoid raising the flap tissue, the gum tissue of the lingual side because the lingual nerve actually crosses over onto the periosteum. That is the bone covering of the bone. And most of the times where these injuries happen, it's right below the gums and onto the bone. And there's a high likely chance you can injure it while raising the flap using an elevator. Now, the symptoms are very simple. Uh, you get, depending upon what nerve it is, inferior alveolar nerve gives you symptoms around here and the lingual nerve gives you 
symptoms around uh, the, two, uh, the, the tongue part, right? The inside of the tongue part. Now, it's very rare that most of the people don't have it uh, amongst a lot of lower third molar surgeries. But the percentage of people who have these symptoms, it is harrowing for them and it is a very quality of life concerning uh, issue for them because a lot of times you're not able to function uh, on a daily basis because you're having this you know constant numbness or tingling or some sort of an insect crawling over here that kind of feeling also people ask me how long is it gonna last because obviously it is not something that is very comfortable well the studies say that usually three to four weeks into uh, the uh, post-operative time they usually spontaneously recover but it has been shown that sometimes it can go up to six months and it may require some sort of medical intervention in the form of uh, neurobion forte injections or supplementations orally and that is why we need to make sure that as a patient you need to be in constant touch with your clinician whosoever has done it most importantly as a clinician and a dentist or an oral or maxillofacial surgeon you need to inform all the possible risks of the surgery before taking an informed consent from the patient because of the fact that the tooth might be very close to the nerve there might be a complicated extraction that requires a lot of more surgical time you might have more of post-operative edema that is the uh, collection of blood and swelling there that can compress onto the nerve and give you symptoms at the same time you can have stuff like direct injury or any sort of bony related truffing that can cause direct injury to the nerve so this was today's episode please like share and subscribe and do press the bell icon button for important updates if you want to get in touch with me for a whatsapp consultation kindly refrain from directly calling me as i might be busy with patients all you have to do is drop me a message with your name your place of location and the symptoms or the chief complaint that you're having and probably within a day or two i will reply to it because i get a lot of messages i've been very grateful to all of you because you all have placed your faith in me as a doctor to talk about your problems and probably have an understanding after backing up my uh, research with actual scholarly articles so i will take my due course of time to probably get back to you but just in case if you want to leave anything uh, as a feedback as a criticism as a query as an apprehension please feel welcome to do so in the youtube comment section so that's it for today thank you